Hello everybody, uh, and welcome to the penultimate of series two of the uh, live band service masterclasses. I'm band colour sergeant Michael Smith. Uh, I'm currently the percussion instructor at the Royal Marines School of Music. Um, I am self-isolating or isolating with my family, um, uh, my wife and my three-year-old daughter. Um, so unfortunately, I'm able to unable to play any. Uh, instruments for you today um, as I don't have any percussion instruments at home. Um, so when I was asked to do this masterclass or that it was voted that I would do a masterclass um, I had to think a little bit outside the box of how I might um, deliver something that's worth worth watching. Um, so as I said I am the uh, percussion instructor at School of Music and it gives me great opportunities to uh, meet the young men and women um, interested in the band service they are either auditions or the career workshops, uh, mass classes, etc. that we do at the school. Um, I take the opportunity to speak to as many as I can um, and really find out the backgrounds of people and what they're up to. Um, what I do think is a little bit of a struggle is how um, a 15, 14, 15, 16 year old um, can relate to me as a 33 year old instructor at the school. Um, maybe has seen, seen some of the performances of, of the Albert Hall um, of, the, of the Royal Marines Band or even a local concert, um, looks at that and so, sort of says, am I, am I able to do that? Um, so, so my plan was today to talk through uh, a little bit about my journey, my 15 year journey so far, um, trying to remain relatable, um, talk about pretty much everything, warts and all, um, and, and if anything in that, you notice one thing that is similar to yourself, um, maybe you think you can go on and do something similar to myself in this career or any career, really. Um, uh, it's hopefully, it's hopefully going to help you along the way. Um, so um, let's just see. Oh, OK, we've got 62 people. Um, uh, Jasmine W13, hello. Uh, Sam Kimberly, um, it's good to know that it's not just my mum watching because she probably knows most of this already. So, um, uh, so that's a good start. So, sixty-three other people uh, and my mum. Okay, so uh, for me, um, the band service was never a uh, career that I knew much about before I, I sort of walked through the doors. It wasn't a lifelong uh, ambition of mine. Um, social media wasn't like um, it is now, so maybe that's that's a reason why I didn't really know much about it. Um, but if I'm honest, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, it all started out uh, musically in a brass band, um, Bugle Silver Band. Um, it wasn't a band of bugles, so uh, that could have turned my career in a different path. It was a brass band um, that my mum played in. Uh, I got dragged along to rehearsals, basically. That's how it worked. I got dragged along to rehearsals, um, and instead of doing my homework in the corner, um, one day it was a little bit sort of easier to pick up a tambourine and shake that and join in. Um, so practically over, practical over acad academic for me, um, which is a little bit of a tale as the, as my sort of story goes on really. Um, so uh, started in Bugle Silver Band, that then uh, developed into joining a youth band, local youth band, Mount Charles in Cornwall, um, and then developed into the senior band. Um, I did get a chance um, in 2000 um, to perform with the uh, youth, Music for Youth in the Royal Albert Hall. Um, little did I know that that was somewhere that I was going to become quite accustomed to later on in life. Um, but it was, a, it was a privilege to play Fanfare for the Common Man from the Gods of the Albert Hall um, with my youth band. Um, and my sister was in that band as well. And I remember my mum saying that it was her lifelong dream to play perform in the Albert Hall. Um, Obviously, that's where the national finals are for the for the brass band world, um, and and there's me and my sister both performing um, at a young age in 2000, and then obviously since um, I, I've I've gone on to, to do a little bit more. Um, okay, so um, I was playing the brass band, got noticed at a brass band contest by a, a man called David Johnson, um, an ex sergeant in the Royal Marines band, euphonium player, um, well known in the brass band scene. And after a conversation with my mum, and my mum saying, what am I going to do with this excitable, hyperactive young man um, who doesn't really know what he wants to do, uh, is not very academic. Um, and he said, you know, I, I've, got, I've got the right idea for him, maybe he could look at, into this career path. So that's really how I, I came to know about the band service. Um, 
Friend, another friend of mine in the brass band, uh, Adam Gore, joined up as well. Um, he auditioned first, um, so I, I literally just followed suit. Um, it, it led me to, to the audition um, 2004. So that's where it started off with, with the band service, audition 2004. Now at this point, I'll say, um, most people ask me uh, for the auditions, do you need to be the, the polished article? Do you need to know all about the academics of music? And do you know the insides of everything? Well, basically, if I tell you that I started off not being able to really read music, I knew what the keyboard was. Um, I did have a GCSE in music, but I wasn't allowed to do it on drum kit. Um, I had to do it on keyboard, one finger keyboard. It was terrible. Um, I'd have to write all the letters above all the all the notes. I could read rhythm pretty well, but I had to write letters above all the notes. Um, I didn't have a clue about intervals, oral skills, etc. And uh, as a as a proof of this, recently whilst I've been at the school and I've been clearing through some um, some offices, I did find my audition paper, um, of which I got fourteen percent for the academics. So when I said Baron Watts and all, fourteen percent was where it all started. Um, it was uh, it was the audition that um, I, that I really wanted to do was percussion. Um, I obviously did have a, a, a bugle audition as well, um, drum and bugle audition, um, but yes, percussion was where I wanted it to be. So I memorised everything. That's how I did it in the brass band world as well. I would memorise a lot of things, just use the music realistically for the bars rest. Um, so uh, on on an audition, um, you know it's not just just my journey. I'm talking about um, it's it's hopefully generic to to a point. On an audition, um, it's it's based over a week. You you have an oral exam on on the audition, but it's a very basic oral exam. Some melodic dictation, a, a simple melodic dictation, some rhythm rhythmic dictations, um, and then also um, some intervals. The Elements exam is probably um, based around the grade five theory side of things. Um, however, it's it's actually really quite lower level. Um, it's not quite to that standard, um, but it, you don't have to be the ace singing and dancing um, musician at that point. You know, I so said fourteen percent. So that's that's on the first few days you do your academic stuff. You obviously have your, your musical assessments, which we'll come back to a little bit in a minute. There's the touch on the physical side of things. Um, and you also get a presentation on the degree, so you get that explained to you throughout, um, and you know, given accommodation, and it's pay as you die in food. So it's a week of which I have made on my audition uh, lifelong friends. Whether you join up or not, you generally will stay in contact with some of those. Um, so they're lifelong uh, friends that you make from the very, very beginning of this journey of the Royal Marines Band Service family. Um, so as I said, I wasn't really in a position that um, I was a grade eight student or anything like that. Um, I turned up on the audition um, with the GCSE grades of 1B, 6Cs, 3Ds, an E and an F. So by far um, not the uh, strongest student in the class. Um, and I met for the first time um, a man called Matt King. Um, he... Uh, it's proven quite a personality in my life, obviously, since then. Um, but I have got a little video now um, of what he looks for uh, in an auditionee when they come through the door. When it comes to auditioning young men and women for the Robins Band Service percussion section, uh, I'm looking for one thing in particular, and that's potential. Because to be a percussionist in the Royal Marines Band Service, the most famous military band in the world, you need to be amongst the most versatile professional percussionists anywhere in the world. You need to be, by the end of your training, equally comfortable sitting uh, at a drum kit in a function band or a big band or in a symphonic wind band or in a jazz trio. Uh, you need to be as comfortable doing that as you are standing at the back flying around symphonic wind band parts on tuned percussion or standing out the front of the Royal Albert Hall playing uh, a xylophone feature or a percussion feature, marimba, vibraphone, whatever. You need to be able to sit at a set of symphonic timpani in the Albert Hall uh, and play big timpani parts as well as play all the ancillary instruments, cymbals, tambourines uh, that you can think of. So our training 
is particularly fast moving. So we're looking for young men and women who are up for a challenge, who aren't scared of hard work, who want to learn. Um, the starting point is, is that you need a very good sense of rhythm, pulse, some natural ability, and then it's, it's my job to do the rest. But you need a good grounding in the fundamentals of playing. Your hands need to be uh, well set up. You need to have some degree of competence on, on the drum kit. A keyboard awareness, uh, so tuned percussion, isn't totally alien to you. Um, but I would say most of all, uh, most young men and women who come to audition for us aren't the finished article. But everybody that we accept has an aptitude for percussion, has an attitude to learn, a willingness to work hard and join what I think is the best military band in the world. And like I say, become amongst the most versatile and impressive professional percussionists anywhere. So that there was um, Professor Matt King. Um, he is the principal percussionist of the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra. Um, after, after a successful audition, um, he is the man that uh, you see twice a week as a percussionist, um, once a week um, if you're a bugler, because he teaches the snare drum for buglers as well. Um, and basically he's the miracle worker, um, certainly for cases like me. Um, he was a Royal Marines Band's moon percussionist, um, and uh, he moved on to, to obviously uh, the bigger stage, uh, as it were. Um, but he still has a very, very um, clear grounding of where it began for him and how we do our business. Um, and I think that makes for a fantastic facility um, to, to, to teach our, our new students. So on completion of your audition, you would, have, um, you, you would then go to uh, your IMT training. I'm not going to go too much into the phase one training. Um, Corporal uh, Amy Phillips is on after this. She can answer any questions for that if it's not already been covered. Um, but so I'm going to go straight into the phase two training now. So this is where the music starts. Um, so I obviously explained the grades I had. Um, so this was an opportunity for me to really buck up the ideas and, and, and make the most of, of an opportunity. So I'll show you now um, some pictures of where the miracles really do happen. Um, so this here is the percussion uh, studio. This is where you spend a lot of your time as a percussionist um, with Matt. Um, but obviously the facilities are second to none. Um, as a percussionist, you also get your own cell, um, but this, this room and another percussion suite um, gives, you, gives us more space to, to perform what we need to perform without disturbing too many uh, of the other musicians in the school. So here we go, you've got, you, you've got a pad, snare drum, and... Um, you can see behind it the, the marimba there. It literally is uh, everything you could possibly want um, to be able to, to practice and go through the syllabus. You can see at the back of this picture, um, it's a soundproof booth with two drum kits in it, um, of which you can, uh, Matt will sit at one and, and, uh, or I'll sit at one as, a, as an instructor, uh, the trainee will sit at the other and you know we can do a bit of question answering um, or just demonstrations, play alongs. Uh, for example. Now I did say that you get your own cell. Um, that will be, this is one of the percussionist cell. Um, yeah, looking at that, it might be Dana Hayes currently. Um, I can't, I know it's not, it's Russell's, so I can see his chart. Um, they're probably watching now. So the three trainees that I've got, make sure you're, uh, you're concentrating on what you need to be doing. I'll be checking up on you later. Um, so uh, you get your own cell. When we say it's a cell, it's because it's in an old prison block. Um, it's a perfect facility for, for what we need at the, at the Royal Marines Band Service and at the Royal Marines School of Music. Uh, everyone gets their own cell. Um, it's an old grade two listed building, um, but the qualities it has um, really allows us to, to, to do what we need to do. You may have seen a couple of videos from there fairly recently. Um, and here's just a final one there. Okay, I'll come out of that. Um, after, after you get in your own cell and, you, and you're working through, um, obviously through your period of, of the School of Music, the current standards are that you get a, um, an assessment task book manual 
don't worry, my lads, this is one of yours, but I'm not going to uh, open it and embarrass anyone. Um, but, it, the, but the criteria didn't, hasn't really changed massively since, since I went through. Um, and uh, it's a system that really works, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a structured system that allows you to, to uh, improve at the correct um, level throughout training. So um, if you're dedicated and you work hard um, and committed, um, you, you'll be able to get through that, that book and do what you need to do. Okay, I'm going to have a little look for some questions now, um, see if there are any questions. Um, hi, Tim Button. Uh, wow, blast from the past. Um, he joined up just after me. Uh, he's now gone on to some amazing charity work. Um, still doing the music thing now. Um, and Mummy Button and his mum. We are a big family at the uh, Royal Moves Band Service, and certainly in the percussion section. Hi there, Jasmine W13, percussionist interest in joining. Excellent. Well, make sure you uh, make yourself aware to um, Corporal Amy Phillips after. Um, she'll be glad to uh, make sure that you're in the system or answer any questions that you have. Um, Bugler's Branch is the best. Yeah, arguably I'm married to one, so uh, I, I could agree to some, some extent. Not completely. Um, okay, so whilst you're at the School of Music, um, Obviously, I'm talking time to get to the big stage uh, as a soloist for me, but I just just um, passing out itself, there's performance um, opportunities available to you. Uh, the, the Monday recitals are the main one that um, basically the best part of the school fall in um, or form up in the concert hall uh, to, to watch their peers uh, perform at whatever standard and level they are at the time. Um, I'm sure you can agree that playing to your peers and your... Um, your subordinates they are it's the best opportunity to to really um to better yourself if you can perform in front of your strictest and most critical audience arguably um you can perform in front of anybody um the um the recitals themselves uh, vary obviously through standard um but the, your final exam culminates with a recital but throughout the school as well there's something we've got as the Cassel Prize. Now it's an internal um, competition, solo competition, um, that it allows you to, um, to, to, to try your hand at performing as a soloist. Um, my first trial of this, um, when I said what's and all earlier, wasn't very good at all. It was in 2006. Um, I attempted to play Ronda La Turk on the xylophone. I wheeled it into the room that we were playing in, uh, that I was playing in, and the, I can't remember who it was, but the officers at the time that, that, that adjudicate it and, and choose who goes through which round. Um, he, uh, um, we heard good things, really, really excited to, to, to hear this and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, safe to say it didn't go very well. Um, I dropped a stick. I was allowed to restart. That's fine. Go again. Um, the music fell off the stand, the music stand fell over um, and as you can imagine I didn't get through and I called it a day there. Um, I did have a little bit of a reason why I was playing a piece that wasn't quite prepared and not from memory as, as we do as percussionists in general. Um, basically the weekend before I played a piece called Shardas, which I'm sure a lot of you will be aware of. Um, for a brass band, Mount Charles band, because we can still perform outside of work with with our um, with 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 the music um, options out there. Um, so I played in an entertainment contest with this brass band, um, and I was ready to play this piece uh, musically, but I wasn't mentally ready for for a solo performance. It would have been my first solo performance um, with a band. I uh, I performed this solo incredibly bad. Um, it was quite an embarrassing time for me, um, but equally, uh, the adjudicating's remarks that went online after it, um, they were quite damning in some respects as well. Uh, more wrong notes than right notes. Um, I, I, I struggle to understand why you would put somebody um, uh, out for a performance like this. Um, as you can imagine, um, not the best of feedbacks to then go back to the Cassel Prize, dump out the Cassel Prize with pretty much of a well, a strong fashion, shall we say. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was not the strongest of times. Um, I uh, I then battled back um, after a lot of lot of obviously training, a lot a lot of help from Matt King, um, working towards. It starts off as a professor, and he definitely works towards your mentor if you if you sort of soak everything the options on the way. 
Um, I, uh, I entered in 2007 in my final year. Um, it was a much better uh, performance. Uh, here's a little picture of me. Um, this was me in the final sort of moments or days leading up to the final, uh, the Kassar Prize final. I played a formal lap piece called um, Rhythm Song uh, by Evelyn Glennie. Um, by far the hardest thing I played at tra in, within training at that time. Um, and uh, it shows the, 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 the steps that I've made from joining with very little uh, ability, shall we say, to um, reaching some of the potential that, that Matt had seen in me. Um, it was a good performance. Um, it's uh, still a laughed, laughed about moment and the fact that here's a picture of us. Um, on my left in the picture um, is Dan Page. He's now Sergeant Dan Page in Portsmouth Band. Uh, is the Portsmouth Band I see. Uh, he picked me to the post for the for the final prize, um, and there was me with my second place, uh, closely followed by um, Adam Lowndes on Euphonium, a fantastic Euphonium, Euphonium player. Um, well, uh, Dan was in his first year at the school as a percussionist, um, so as you can imagine, it, it bit a little bit. However, um, it shows great depth um, that we had um, in training at the time. Um, safe to say, went on to complete training um, overcoming some of those performance um, anxieties, worries um, as a soloist uh, with the real help of Matt King um, uh, with the confidence boosters, etc. Um, let me just have a little look, see if there's any questions regarding that. Jasmine, yeah, Rhythm Song is a beauty. Um, it's quite long though. Uh, I hope this video will be available later, I can't get sound. Yeah, um, if you haven't got any sound, um, this will be saved up onto YouTube um, and if there's any specific things you would like uh, will um, please let me know and I will uh, I'll get that to you if it's worth seeing um, what's the best audition pieces to choose um, so um, if, if you didn't catch what I said before uh, in the sense of my ability when I went in um, just play something that you are comfortable to play um, the standard is is irrelevant to a point there is no set standard on them um, something you're comfortable to play uh, there's there's some pieces that recur from time to time, um, but I wouldn't want to even suggest what you can play because uh, the the best part of the audition is is the different pieces people come in uh, come in with and sort of surprise us with. Is a tuned percussion repertoire essential for audition? Um, so I'm not sure if you caught what it said in in uh, Matt's video there. Um, Eggland dining, if that's what it says. Um, so you have to have an understanding of the keyboard. Um, but you, you don't have to be fruition on the instrument straight away. No, you don't. Um, inspirational Harry Page. Yeah, I hope you are. He's one of my uh, last trainees to pass out. He's going on to do fantastic things up in Scotland Band. Um, okay, um, so, so as I said, I passed out. Um, and I... Uh, Every, every pass out finishes with an open day. Um, it's the day that your family get to come and uh, to watch you perform uh, as a band, marching band and concert band throughout the day. Um, here's a little picture. This is uh, my pass out um, outside the Portsmouth Guildhall. Um, you do a beat retreat at the end of the day, you do a concert series or a concert throughout the day inside the Guildhall. Um, got um, some great memories of open days. Um, in 2006, as I said, um, uh, although I'd sort of struggled with, with the Castile Prize that year, um, I was given the opportunity to play a piece called Le Clochettes um, with, a, with a, a young man called Kevin Marsh. Um, he was a troop above me. Um, we played it dressed as Batman and Superman, if I remember rightly, and the drum major made us come in the next day and play football with his with his son's um, rather hot day, uh, sweaty mess at the end of that. Um, but it was an opportunity to play um, play uh, for the first time as a soloist or duet um, in, in Royal Marines band uniform. Um, so it was a really, really big day that, um, that day, as well as the year to follow. Um, I, uh, in 2006, um, there was an award given out, um, it's called the Prince's Badge. Um, the Prince's Badge is given to the best all-round um, musician uh, that, that passes out of that year, that troop. Um, it's the equivalent of the King's Badge uh, for the Royal Marines Commandos. Um, it was brought out for the 25th anniversary of the appointment of Captain General um, of Prince Philip 
Chief of Edinburgh. Um, it's quite a poignant um, award and prestigious award to get. Um, not only um, for for the, it's obviously just the one in the troop, and that means you know that you've you've picked all your your comrades to that. Um, it was the fact that Matt King actually was awarded the Prince's badge, um, and then I was the first percussionist to receive it after him. Uh, that resonated quite highly with me. Um, I uh, I felt that I owe a, a great deal to Matt um, and to to the the facilities that he gave me through training um, uh, and he continues to offer that now um, in, in fairness um, with opportunities to play with the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra um, and to really push myself um, but on, in 2006 uh, it was awarded I believe it was to Warren Lindsay I apologise if it wasn't um, it was Charlotte Stuss or Warren Lindsay I can't remember which way around it was um, uh, so Basically, I told my mum um, and Chris Rundle, uh, a family friend of ours, um, that I was going to go and seek this this award the following year. Um, a fairly big statement. I am quite a confident guy um, in general, um, but in some respects, um, a realistic, uh, unrealistic uh, challenge to to assume that I'm going to go and get this. But it, it gave me a nice spur and a target for. Um, the remainder of my training um, i uh, I was successful for for picking up the award as those of you that have seen me perform may have seen in my uniform um, and there 's a little picture of young face me uh, receiving that award um, at times it, it initially um, I felt that it was a, a little bit of a weight on the shoulder shall we say um, an expectation um, but actually the biggest part of that for me was. Up until that point, I don't think I'd ever achieved anything as an individual. Um, those of you that are in the brass band world, you, you're successful um, at competitions, winning competitions um, as a team, um, sportsmen and women as a team. Uh, but to, to, to get this award, it was basically being recognised uh, that I had done uh, my very best to achieve what I was after. Um, so it was a rather big deal um, for me. But anyway, self-gratification, I'll carry on. Um, so on, on completion of, uh, of Pass Out, um, an open day, I went on to um, Dartmouth Band, BRNC, which is no longer there. Um, an absolutely fantastic band to start. Um, learned a lot of things from um, the corporal I see, Matt Hardin, and it was in a section with Kev Marsh. Um, Matt Hardin was a fantastic, fantastic player, um, and, and it showed the depth of experience within the band service. Um, he, he taught me more. Um, on top of what I already knew from Matt um, and from Matt King, and it really, really meant that uh, I could hopefully store all of that up and, and teach it to those that I'm teaching now at, at, within training. So that's that's really um, a, a big moment for me. Even though it was only seven months in Dartmouth Band before deploying to Afghanistan um, or training and then deploying for Afghanistan, um, it was um, it was a real moment. Ah, oh, Matt Hardin's just popped up. Hi, Matt. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I didn't see that before. I promise. Uh, so, uh, deployed to Afghanistan, um, it, it, it was a real uh, eye-opener, I was 21, I was the youngest um, bandsman of the, or bandsman or woman that went on that deployment on Herrick 9. Um, it was a moment where I realised that the band service is made up of absolutely fantastic people that can put their hands to anything, not just music. Um, here's a little picture, um, some terrible moustaches. Um, uh, in the middle is uh, a young lady called Sandy. She was part of the um, Aeromed system and we would um, help her in taking casualties from the hospital to the Hercules and send them back home. So a very, very important um, and for me a prestigious job. Um, but within that deployment, <coughs> excuse me, we, uh, we had radio operators, ambulance troop drivers, um, and MT drivers, a little bit of everything. So that showed me what we had in depth as well. Uh, what it did mean is I, I wasn't available to do my M2 exam, um, which is the, f the following exam to uh, allow you to be um, a candidate for promotion to corporal. Um, I wasn't able to do that on time um, because I was deploying. So when I got back, um, uh, we opened Columnwood Band, um, fantastic band. I loved my time in Columnwood um, and I prepared for my M2s. And this is another moment where um, uh, the academics uh, hit me quite hard. Um, I 
hadn't played music for 14 months um, over the, other than a snare drum. Um, I did play that out in Afghanistan. Um, but I didn't play tuned music, tuned instrument for 14 months after, after the deployment, including the deployment and, and after. Um, which was a really difficult thing to come back and try and, and relearn a lot of what I'd, uh, uh, I could do and then couldn't do it at the time. Um, it meant that I really focused hard on the playing side of the M2s, um, performed to a very, very high standard on the pieces, which I was really pleased to do. I was on the course with Tim Button, actually, um, uh, but I failed my academics. Um, 59%, sounds a little harsh, but 59%, 60% pass mark. Um, so it was a little bit of a knockback. Um, Matt King was there to pick up the pieces. Um, obviously, I was very proud that uh, I hadn't failed on the musical side of things, and that's that's my job that's what i that's what i pride myself on um however uh it just showed i didn't basically do time management very well which is something i've hopefully learned um along the way um however in 2010 it did land to um to me to be on my first mfm i passed out in 2007 and didn't do an mfm until 2010 um i was lucky enough to play in a quartet um that year with um, my instructor, my first instructor, Martin Andrew, no S on the end, that'll please some people that I didn't say that, Martin Andrew, um, played Le Clochettes, so it was a piece that obviously I played at the Open Day 2006, so it was one I knew. Um, it was my first chance to really see how um, people deal with nerves and deal with the big stage. Um, it didn't really hit me that it was 10 years after I'd last performed at the Albert Hall. Um, that sort of come later date um, when I think about things and, and sort of reminisce back on those things. Um, but yeah, 10 years after already being there, um, playing to realise that then performing a feature out the front. Um, uh, it was Martin Andrews, Tim Button and Dave Hernan. I hope I got that right. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, uh, and I wasn't nervous at all, if I remember rightly, on that one. Um, but I remember watching Martin Andrew m walking up and down, playing it over in his head, playing it over his head. I thought, that's just something I don't do. It's just not, not the way I do it. Um, everyone has different ways of dealing with it. But as the years have gone on, I've found myself migrating to that plan, um, going over and over in my head. Um, and it hasn't always worked out for me. Um, and I think it may be an age thing in the sense that it's harder to, to, to memorise stuff. But... Uh, that hasn't always been the best way for me, and I'll and I'll explain why that comes in the following year. Um, so the Clochette's a great opportunity. Um, the next year, um, it's turned into a bit of an MFM uh, talk about the solos, but I think that's where where we want to be talking about and and how I deal with um, deal with the preparation and and other things that come along the way. Um, the following year was two thousand eleven, and we did Joyful Skeleton. Um, it was a quartet again, um, the same three youngsters, me, Dave and Tim, and it was um, headed by um, Dave Prentice, W1, Dave Prentice now, uh, the bandmaster at the School of Music. Um, he he was the brains behind some of the uh, choreography, so blame him if you, if you watch that. Um, but uh, the, earlier on that year, early in 2011, end of 2010, um, within Collingwood Band, um, for one thing and another, I ended up being the only percussionist in the band. Um, it was quite a difficult spell, you know, bouncing from drum kit to then jumping up and playing his xylophone solo within the band. Um, and actually, again, musically I was ready, but mentally I wasn't in the right frame of mind to be able to do this. There was two or three, um, so Nick Westall or Colors West will definitely tell me that um, it was three, but I'm gonna say two, because one of them was a double concert. Um, uh, three concerts in total that Joyful Skeleton went absolutely terribly. Um, wheeled xylophone out, introduced Big Big Up, um, started it fine, didn't play very much between sort of the first 16 bars and the repeat and then uh, played the ending, thanks very much, bowed, you won't ever hear it like that again. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it was absolutely terrible. Um, I can only explain that this was because I was over over practicing it in the sense of um, the worry of needing to go over it and over and over and over it. Um, I didn't trust in my ability, which is what um, Matt definitely has taught me over the years. 
Um, be confident, trust in your ability. So by going over and over it again, um, it definitely didn't help me in this situation. Um, I got through it. Um, the boss at the time is now the, the principal director of music, um, Colonel Jace Bircham. Um, you're, you're an MFM soloist. Uh, Mike Smithy, you're an MFM soloist. If you, you need to get over this, you can go out there and do it. You can perform this. Next one, not so good. Go back to him. You, you're an MFM soloist. We don't want to. We don't want to ruin this. You need to make sure you know what you're. You, you know what you're capable of. When you do it right, when we get a good one out of you, and and you know, um, we'll put this solo to bed and we'll get another one out. Um, sure to say, uh, I did get a good performance out, thankfully. Um. But the core bandmaster at the time, Tom Hodge, had a uh, little brass quintet um, and he asked me if I would go and do George Skelton as an encore. So uh, I went and did that. It was with a very broken down ensemble, obviously, um, very exposed. Um, and, and, it, and it went really, really well for him to follow saying um, that, uh, how would I like to perform that on the Albert Hall this, uh, at the Albert Hall this year as a quartet? Um, so to say I was very, very nervous, but wearing a skeleton one onesie or is it onesie I think so morph suit skeleton morph suit couldn't see any couldn't see anything people couldn't see who I was um it, it, went, it went pretty well but I think that really helped with the nerves on that side of things um 2000 oh, let me have a little let's see if there's any questions um hi, hi Gordon Penfold we wear a blue beret uh, there's a question for that one um it's the original Royal Marines beret but I've got a feeling you know the answer to that um do you have to audition on every percussion instrument, Alison seven nine five? Um, so you don't. Um, however, it's um, it's good to to show on as many as you can. Um, you don't have to play on every instrument. Although we will probably will introduce you to an instrument if you don't already know. Um, Connor Beach, what sort of things would you do to build confidence? Um, okay, um, I'll touch on that very quickly. So. Building confidence, um, it starts off with preparation. Um, I think there's a bit of a strength in triangles in a sense of um, structure, um, technical ability, um, the baseline, so that's your practicing, your rudimentary, your scales, whatever instrument it is, that is that's the base and the foundations of everything is your technical ability. Um, breaking things down, going from the basics, make sure you've got them in, 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 in spades. Um, the other side being, um, the performance preparation in the sense of the actual piece, um, making sure that you have prepared it in the correct manner. Um, so technical and preparation, um, I would say that you would, you, you're looking at making sure you play the piece inside out. Where I went wrong with Joyful Skeleton, I'd learnt it, memorised it, um, but I learnt it completely um, as one top to bottom. And if I got out, I couldn't get back in. That's where that one fell down. Um, so now I try to prepare a piece that I break it into to sizable chunks, uh, memorise it as soon as I can memorise it because we always perform without music um, and then slot it together. But at times I will perform it, um, record myself all the time. I do that video myself all the time um, and, and I'll stop and I'll join in on, on another bit to see that I can do that if I needed to do it because live music is live music and anything can happen. Um, and the other side of it is is building your confidence. Um, you know, the question itself, build your confidence, is believe in yourself by, I, I record myself and I watch it back. That's how I, I build my confidence mainly. Um, uh, belief in your ability, um, belief in your technical ability, the preparation of that piece will be build confidence and you'll, you'll have a strong performance. I hope that makes some sort of sense. Um, yeah, I hope that makes some sort of sense. Okay. Um, in a marching band, is a bass drum, is is the bass drum a bugler or percussionist? It's a percussionist. Um, yeah, that's that's what we do as percussionists. So bass drum, tenor drum, cymbals on parade. Um, the buglers do use buglers on bass drum for statics from uh, for their small mess beatings, um, and we do some of those as well. But um, on the parade band itself, um, it's uh, a percussionist on bass drum. Um, okay, so um, we got to complete of um, Joyful Skeleton. Um, both of those performances were um, were things that obviously it's, it's the big album stage. It's it's the quartet, um, uh, but 
but equally around around the band service there's there's bands doing different gigs it's not just all about mfm there's different gigs as well and i want to just mention a few that uh that really stand out for me and opportunities that you get just or that i've had just because i was in the royal marines band service um the first one is a parade that i did um it was a paralympic parade um with colin and bad it was absolutely incredible um the the sheer number of people um it, it can only you know we're looking at the ve day celebrations now and and how everyone lined the streets um i mean the number of people it, it, that's as close as i can imagine so here's here's a, a picture of column of band um going down the mile there um but the next two pictures look at the the amount of people that came out obviously they hadn't come out just to see us it was a paralympic parade it was a it was a, it was a, a, a national moment but what an incredible gig to be uh, to be part of, um, and that is me on bass drum there, and um, with uh, Sergeant Barnes. Um, so that answers that question. Yeah, that's us on bass drum there. Um, we also do uh, different TV appearances. Some of you may have seen us on on some of them. Give us a thumbs up if you saw us on um, Saturday Night Takeaway with Ed Sheeran. Um, had a little moment with the Congas there, uh, with Dan Page on drum kit. It was an amazing gig. Um, and also a league of their own. I don't know if anyone uh, remember or watches League of Their Own, but the early series of League of Their Own. Here's Colin Band. See what's it say? Season five. Um, that was us on a League of Their Own. So an incredible opportunity. Um, so it's not just all about the Albert Hall, but for me, the Albert Hall is where I feel very, very comfortable, um, and a lot of people will will recognise me from. Um, so the, the first two performances I, I had done were were a quartet. Um, strength in numbers. Um, really helped, really helped with um, with the confidence as as Connor had asked earlier on. You know, if you've got strength in numbers, that really really helps. Um, the following the following year, two thousand twelve, as a piece called "Lady Be Good," and there you go, Tim Button. If you're still watching, there you are, look, young, baby faced as always, Tim Button playing the vibraphone there. Um, this was the first one that was uh, for for me that wasn't the the comedy act as such. It was um, it was a serious number, "Lady Be Good." Um, it was it was a really really big moment um, for me. It was proof of everything that we'd worked for that, that the percussion section aren't just the jokers. We do like to have fun. We do have an air of uh, um, well, we have the availability to have fun at the back because we're so far away from the boss and the bandmaster that they can't really tell what's going on. Um, except if your bandmaster's a percussionist and your boss is a percussionist, then you've had it because he knows what's going on. Um, uh, the 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 following. Uh, performance for me at the Albert Hall because um, I'm conscious of the time was uh, was Root Beer Rag um, this had its own difficulties um, this is us with the, with the two Alpha Series xylophones they were brand new for this one absolutely fantastic um, they sound amazing in the Albert Hall uh, and that's Craig Sanders uh, Corporal Craig Sanders with me on that one he is now a percussionist in Portsmouth Band uh, the Royal Band he uh he stepped up to the plate quite late on with this. So when we talk about preparation and confidence, um, I was performing this feature with uh, Sophie Witter was Warby. Um, she was a percussionist in the Royal Band with me at the time and we'd worked up um, almost to performance ready um, with a couple of weeks to go before we went on Easter leave. Um, for me to receive a phone call that she'd broken her wrist skiing on Easter leave and she wasn't able to perform it. Um, the call by master at the time called me, discussed whether there was an option to do it as a solo. Um, as, as, if I'm completely honest, um, it probably would have worked as a solo, but uh, I probably wasn't ready to do a solo. I still needed that confidence as a duet and, and someone by my side. Um, and it has a lot of repeats in it because it's a bit of a jewel in xylophone piece, so uh, it wouldn't have really worked completely as a solo or it would have been a lot shorter. So Craig stepped up, two and a half weeks notice, maybe not even that. So that shows the ability that um, certainly he has got and a number of um, uh, percussionists and, well, nearly everybody um, could step up and, and learn at that time. Um, they, uh, they, to, to learn it that quick um, would take very you know, severe dedication, but equally a, a proven plan of how to memorise music. Um, for me, I said it's repetition, um, it's recording myself, breaking it down into bite-sized chunks, um, slower, faster, um, try to, 
I mean, even times of run round, run round the concert or get your heart rate going, going and try and play this, this artifice solo. Um, going to try and prepare for that moment. Um, but that was an incredible thing that Craig did, um, and that that is a fantastic one. And I'm really, really pleased that that is a solo or duet now that has come out a couple of times at the School of Music as part of the the, the um, exams, and um, it gives me great fond memories. Uh, the next one. Now this has got to be probably my favourite um, performance, um, not necessarily musically, although it started off. Uh, it was an incredible thing for me to play a, a cadenza, a marimba cadenza. That was the, that was a dream for me. Um, once this all started, I was I was planning to try and get to the point where we had a marimba at the front of the stage. Um, only a two mallet cadenza for me, um, with my partner in crime, Joe Kemp. Um, I, it just popped up there saying hello. Um, wow. Um, like I say, what Joe Kemp? He. Uh, yeah, he was definitely my right hand man when it came to the to the sketches, uh, to the performances. He, but he, in the section, he was unbelievable as well. Um, we won't hold it against him. He's now part of the the um, RAF band. Um, it, the the situation was better for his family to be nearer an RAF band. Um, but it shows that they have fantastic musicians as well. Um, and there's one that, that I know uh, is doing very, very well and will go on to do amazing things. Listeria was absolutely fantastic, except that, that it wasn't recorded. Um, it was a year before the first live stream and I felt that it was a sketch that was absolutely perfect for the live stream. Um, I have got one, uh, a little sketch of um, my uh, myself and um, Joe, uh, playing uh, Maple Leaf Rag um, of which uh, was the following live stream so just to fill you in on, the, on what's happening hopefully you can hear me over the video um, the front row this was the final performance that me and Joe Kemp did together before we left the band service and it was a big moment for us the front row were actually his family, so uh, I told him I was going to go out and give him a bit of a handshake and, and dig it up a little bit. So, uh, so that's what I uh, that's what I went out and did. Um, to say things don't always go right, you'll see that I'm fidgeting a little bit with the with the in-ear monitors. Um, for some reason or other, there was some disturbance on the line, um, uh, and and things weren't quite going to plan. Um, but you can't let that on, and certainly of a year. It's the first year that it was live stream and there was a lot of people watching. Um, I was absolutely petrified with this one. Um, and things don't, you know, things don't always go to plan, but we can only do what we can do um, with live music. That is, that is what we can do. Hear how amazing the Alpha series sounds. Um, it, it pings so well in the Albert Hall. Um, fantastic instrument. So here, here's something that people won't really know. So these instruments um, and, and things that we come up with for the sketches, um, they're made in house. So the xylophone itself, obviously the, the, the Yamaha Rosewood, but the wobbly wheels were all um, done in our workshop. Um, the whole sketch itself is developed by the best part of ourselves. Um, so, so it's not just about the music, is it? It's, um, it's about the whole performance, but uh, even down to him catching his jacket there. Um, it's, uh, it's nice to be the funny one um, when it pays off, um, but it was lovely to, to get the opportunity from time to time to play uh, the serious numbers as we did this year, as, as those of you that will remember, um, or that have watched it already, and it's on tonight. Uh, Forces TV, 6 o'clock I think, I think I got that right. Um, I'll just stop that there, because we have got time to watch a little bit, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, the, the, the following years, it, it, the, the biggest thing that changed for me, um, and made it a lot harder, was the live stream. Um, this is where I had real issues with nerves. Um, I had a bit of a knock confidence levels, um, certainly with the preparation of 
pipe dream. Um, this one itself, um, what can I say? It was very, very difficult because we were making an instrument and we were up against it, um, yet we still had to try and prepare to play the piece ready for the concert. Um, it's a, <clears throat> it was an instrument that we've seen online, um, but it was an instrument that needed, put, needed making out of a lot of drone pipes. I must give a shout out to Claire Walsh, she's spent an, an obscene amount of time um, preparing this instrument. But I'll let you in through some inside knowledge on this one. The first performance um, in the rehearsals, um, after James played his xylophone entry fantastically well, um, we played the rimba tube um, and the, the part that we were playing at the time basically just was not going to work um, and, the, and the piece ground to a halt. And for the rest of the week it was a battle to work out how we're going to make this instrument work, make the sketch work, um, and work working with uh, Dan Page who um, arranged the piece, it was trying to work out how are we going to um, get round this instrument um, and make it as good as we have come to expect in the Ringwood Band's performances. Um, safe to say we did. Um, we did achieve that. Um, I can't believe Hello? that this video yeah. has been watched 874,000 times. Um, My bucket is it wet. was a time that I, uh, and I, think I felt like physically thinking. sick going to play this one. Um, okay. And Thank you. the release I had after, um, after the performance um, it was enough to bring tears to my eyes um, because I was just incredibly, incredibly nervous about this performance. Because I was playing an instrument that I wasn't a professional at. Um, it was, it was so very, very difficult. However, um, it's come across really well. But, you What's know, up here? What's going on? That is part of what we do, is that you have well, to believe well, in yourself. Well, and then, well, and I did have a uh, strength from, um, in, in in James, who played a blinder that year, um, as he did this year, um, and, and the support of everyone around me, the family uh, were more than aware that this year was a, a year I wasn't comfortable with. Met them before we went on, I didn't you. really talk, didn't really speak, didn't eat anything. Um, I need to not myself. <clears throat> but um, that said, uh, we like to challenge ourselves, we like to push ourselves, and that was one of the ones that um, now it's seen as an amazing thing, and it was fantastic, um, but at the time. It was um, it was very difficult. Um, so I'm going to turn that off. So that we can keep talking. Um, so so it's not like I said. It's not only the album at all. Um, however, the the social media live feeding has has changed the dynamic of, of things that we've that we've got as a percussionist, as performers in the album hall uh, in the Romans band service. Sorry. Um, and, and one I have to mention, um, just because we might get some more views on it, because because uh, it's a little bit of an in-house competition, um, but it was the concept of doing the uh, the Christmas message um, from the Gunwolf uh, shopping centre. Um, a lot of you will have seen this. He says. I can't stop that, so maybe, maybe I haven't got it here to be able to play it to you, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it anyway. Um, so uh, basically, it was a video of, of myself standing in positions and not able to move outside of it, so that I could be the three players on that that video. Um, put a thumbs up if you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Get the get the hits up. Um, it was uh, it's been watched by 1.2 million views. Um, that that said, um, it was it was something that uh, was arranged in house, so arranged by um, Nick West, um, and it and it went down incredibly well. Um, these things are now, uh, you know, bigger and better um, outputs of, of advertising the band service and, and recruitment tools. Um, it, in itself, it's, um, it's allowed more people to, uh, to, to share it, obviously. Um, but, it, but hopefully it'll mean that, that you will have seen the band service that you may not have seen them um, before, because I hadn't seen the band service perform much, if at all, before. Um, before I uh, before I joined up, um, I will ask. I'll answer a few questions now. I'm running close to the timeline. Um, believe I talk about myself for that long. Um, some of you will. Um, I'll answer a few questions, but just just so you know, if you are absolutely um, 
raring to hear about buglers um, and the buglers brunch um, as someone stated they are the best brunch um, on Tuesday the 12th of May you've got Corporal Bugler, Bugler Ben Streeter um, so he will fulfill your bugling needs um, uh, so so hopefully that will uh, that will please a lot of you that are, are waiting out for that um, right, I'm going to answer a few questions whilst I've got some time if I can lots of thumbs up take it that's the Christmas message um, we were there, we were there, I saw this live, thank you very much, thank you very much. Um, Rosara Marimba Concerto, um, yes, uh, it's one, I haven't put, I haven't performed it, um, although I've, I've certainly looked at it and worked on sections of it, um, it is one that is used within the repertoire. Um, uh, James Stam has played uh, that for his degree recital, I think it was a degree recital, um, fairly recently, um, fantastic, and a few of the trainees use it from time to time. RNMCML and X um, got my audition in July struggling with fitness any tips um, that's definitely one for Amy Phillips after this um, there will be some support with that um, although um, uh, yeah I'll leave it I'll leave it to answer those um, but there's there's plenty of um, there's plenty of time right now to do to do personal fitness isn't there so um, so hopefully you're, you're finding that and everybody's staying safe with with uh, what's going on at the moment um, Matthew Richardson 87 in a marching band yeah we've done that one good good um, okay so um, if there are no further questions um, very interesting thanks from Jersey um, well I've been to Jersey been to Guernsey um, uh, fair bit of travel with the Royal Marines Band Service obviously so uh, so that comes into party as well um, I hope this has been a bit been beneficial um, I'm hoping it was relatable to some extent for the youngsters that are planning to join up. Um, that you don't need to be the perfect model. That's the, that's what this is all about. Um, I was a hyperactive child that didn't know what I was going to do. Didn't sit down and pay much attention at school. Um, I was very practical, practical minded. Um, I've learned a lot of things on the way. Um, the main thing is your support with your my family. So I'd like to thank them. Um, the friends that you, you do find in the band service and when they leave. Um, there's a few of them on here posting some questions of support, so thanks very much. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's definitely a career worth considering. Um, and if it's not a career that you either completely want or end up joining or are successful on, please come and support us, come and watch us. Um, make sure you come and say hello to me. Um, uh, and uh, I would love to uh, look forward to performing for you again. Um, so all the very best, stay safe. Um, I will just see if I can post this. So, not about First Music 2020, that's tonight, six o'clock, Forces TV. So I mentioned that. Um, and here's a little post. If there's any questions about the fitness stuff um, or any further questions for me, use the hashtag at the bottom. Uh, Amy Phillips and the team will get hold of me and I will respond um, any way I can. Please stay safe, um, do what we're told, um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.